guys welcome back to part three of this video so in this video we're going to look at the race from a few people's uh, other people's perspectives and um, yeah I'm just going to look at um, the full race uh, I'm going to skip through quite a bit of it um, but you'll see the beginning of it and how it developed and um, so yeah let's uh, make a start um, I managed to uh, get on the front row for the start I got a clean lap in the last race um, and uh, somebody managed to out qualify me uh, but it seemed that in the race this person wasn't actually my main rival uh, we'll make a start on it now um, so yeah the guy ahead there he's uh, FRC Chris um, yeah he wasn't my main rival um, but yeah, we'll just see how this race develops. It squeezes me a little bit. Um, maybe he had the other guy on his right hand side. Um, I'll just skip back. So it's little Buddha. Um, I guess Marino, he would cut in the corners like so much. I just wanted to beat this guy in a track where you just can't cut the corners. Uh, so obviously you can see here, um, straight away he's kind of come into the back of somebody. That's just you know, really clumsy. And he's lost quite a bit of time. And he uh, doesn't really manage to keep up. Um, and yeah, another mistake there. And we'll skip back a little bit further. And um, yeah, none of, none of these people really, I mean, they were all pretty, at pretty decent pace, but we managed to stretch out a bit of a lead. Um, you see um, somebody here, this guy was quite fast as well. Um, but the guy in the lead, the FRC, Chris, um, don't think he's a FRC driver. <laughs> um, yeah, made a bit of a mistake there, and um, yeah, I've gone up into the lead. I uh, just edged that guy out wide. Um, so, for some reason. Um, so yeah, we'll just stick with him for for maybe just a little bit of a lap and just sort of see how um, how the race develops from here. I think basically what I managed to do is uh, I managed to. You know, pretty early on, get quite a good um, lead over the rest of the pack, uh, which turned out to be a good thing. It worked in my favour for this race. Obviously, if you watch part one, you'll know I do end up winning the race. Don't mean to spoil it, but uh, yeah, I do end up winning the race. Um, but uh, yeah, it was. Uh, it were. It, like, we'll say it was a tense race. And I think it's probably the the first time I've done this track in in this um, <coughs> in this um, in this uh, hopper. Um, yeah. So I mean, I, I know the track fairly well. I'd, I, I've not hopped up to it a whole lot, and yeah, I could probably maybe uh, do a practice in this track if it's going to start coming up. I'm really enjoying, I've just got to say, you know, I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit, you know, I'm really enjoying uh, the endurance lobby, uh, it's just, yeah, I, there's a lot of things that I like about it, there's, there's a lot of fast drivers, I will say that um, that's one thing about it, it's, um, if you, if you, if you haven't tried, you know, if you were, you know, watching, I would, like before, I would do an A class, um, did a little bit of A class, and then I started doing the spec stuff, but, yeah, if you if you kind of if you find yourself in A class and whatnot, and you know you feel like you're quite fast, uh, which I I thought I was you know fairly okay pace wise, uh, I came to the endurance GT lobby and um, yeah, I will just say it's it's quite humbling. Uh, there is a lot of fast guys. Uh, usually, there's maybe two or three people who will be as much as two seconds a lap faster than me. So yeah, it's. Um, uh, in A class, I usually I would, I would, you know, seem like a pretty decent pace, but then there's other things, you know, I was, uh, as you can see, I don't use braking line anymore, I uh, stopped using braking line, um, and um, I, um, you know, so, 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 and I don't use race brakes, so, um, you know, there is, there is a sort of couple of things, um, you know, the, the mean, you know, the, I know, I'm pretty sure a lot of the faster guys that, you know, the guys that you see who are doing these lap times, 
uh, probably more experience at, at this hopper as well as kind of division more experience than me as well um, but most likely I imagine a lot of them I'll be using the uh, braking line uh, uh, it's just one of the things that I like about this you know you can get comfortable with this car you can use this car this one particular car I use that pretty much every track you know and um, it'll do you apart from you get beaten by Maserati at tracks like Le Mans and um, Daytona you know if, if people decide to use the, uh, the Maserati uh, that's uh, definitely um, a speed car in this division but I like the fact that you know when it's a division there isn't a huge you know you, you know the cars are similar they're, they're balanced and they perform in a similar way uh, so you, you can use a, a same car at, at a lot of different tracks and it, it'll work um, and then obviously you've got tracks like you know handling based tracks where you need the Aston Martin DB Nine uh, DB R nine um, for the handling. You need maybe seven five handling. Um, so there's you know there, there is uh, exceptions to the rule, but uh, you know most of the time uh, you can get away with using one car, and I like that because you can get used to the car, get used to the braking points. Uh, I don't even you know you can't. There's no difference in upgrades or, or anything like that. You know it just stays the same. The only thing that changes really is the amount of wing that I use uh, so I'll, I'll use maybe you know I've got five tunes ranging from zero aero right up to 100% downforce um, so yeah and everything in between um, and that works really well that's pretty much the only thing that I change and you, you know I use the same ones try to use the same amount of aero the same tune um, at each track and um, you get used to it you just get used to switching from one to the other or it doesn't take very long to adapt to it, um, you know, because you just get used to those braking points. So you don't really need braking line to be fast. But uh, I have a sneaking suspicion things like uh, braking line and traction control maybe would um, <clears throat> get you a little bit more speed on certain tracks. But yeah, so I mean, but usually, you know, there'll be somebody in the lobby who's um, two seconds a lap faster than everybody else um, but I can kind of live with that you know um, you know when you sort of factor in the fact that you know I'm, I'm not using race brakes I'm not using braking line and I'm not using traction control um, you'd expect to be to be slightly slower and I'm not always using the perfect car or the perfect tune you know it's just a, a quick lobby tune so the excuse is out of the way yeah I'm slightly slower than a lot of people but I can live with that so yeah that's the excuses out of the way um, but yeah uh, it, it, it did hurt me so there we go this is the guy this is the guy that was challenging me uh, so you see he's using the uh, BMW M8 um, and um, it's got race brakes as you can see um, and it was definitely getting me on the brakes that was where we were really closing up and I imagine they were probably using slightly more handling um, but we'll just kind of stay on board here for a little bit as, as you can see it's slowly starting to reel me in up until this point I thought I had the race in hand and I was just looking forward to it I kind of got it in my mind that I was going to win this race I would kind of thought yeah this is mine I'd pulled away a little bit and I didn't really know at this point because I hadn't, I hadn't really hot lapped this track I didn't really know how bad the jag was around this track it turns out you look on the leaderboard uh, it's quite off the pace to you know compared to your, like say the KTM seems to be the one that cropped up um, I, I would say even the, the, the BMW mate uh, would appear to be faster around this track um, despite the fact that you usually most around most tracks the um, the BMW is the, the mate is um, quite a bit slower the, the Jag is you know usually quite up there you know it'll usually have a, a number one time at certain tracks and the mate tends not to but I was looking at the leaderboard to see you know and it seems like even even the mate around this track with its extra handling I imagine um, is is faster than the Jag so it kind of gives me you know gives me a little bit of um, you know everybody else were fairly similar pace but this guy were a second and a fast second and a half faster than everybody else so getting past people quite quickly uh, reeling me in quite fast 
and um, it was starting to get a little bit tense by this point but I was at this point I wasn't really too worried I didn't realize you know quite how much pace he had it wasn't too apparent until uh, there were just <clears throat> there were one lap where I was looking behind me and, and there was nobody there and then all of a sudden it caught me up and I thought how the hell did he reel me in that, that, that amount of distance um, so fast I really don't know um, and it, that's when I started to panic a little bit because I'd kind of got it you know a lot, of, a lot of the time you know I don't take it too seriously for somebody fast in the lobby and they catch me really fast I just sort of think you know I don't want to lose time um, I don't want to end up getting into a battle and losing time uh, and then getting losing loads of places so I'll just let them go if, if somebody's clearly got a couple of seconds in hand over me usually I'll just I won't fight it especially if I'm further down in, in the pack but when it I guess when it's when you know when you're away from the pack um, and it's for the lead yeah maybe I'll fight tooth and claw occasionally sometimes I just get that you know sometimes I just get that feeling like I like the track I like the car I'm enjoying myself this is mine I want to win this one and it was just one of those occasions where I was just like okay nothing's gonna I'm not, I'm not gonna let anybody take this win away from me I just wanted to win uh, it was just one of those it was just one of those occasions where I wanted to win I'm not quite sure why I think I, I, I just like this track and I was just it kind of got into my mind that I was going to win and um, yeah I decided it was just one of those occasions where I was just like I'm going to do everything I can to win despite the fact that this guy clearly had more pace than me um, usually I've, I'd, I like to sort of think that if somebody's got more pace than me you know they deserve to win but uh, then on the other occasions uh, such as this you know I just I'll fight tooth and claw for it and it, this is just one of those occasions where I decided to do that um, and um, but yeah as you can see I was losing time in certain areas uh, mostly because I didn't have a braking line on um, so I'll show you the, the two areas uh, I've never like I say in this division I've never really hot lapped this track I'll try to keep it clean as I always do so I'm backing off the throttle ever so slightly to come through there and I didn't have a breaking point for here. I know it's that little dark shadow patch of, like on the right hand side, that's what I use now. Um, I've had a quick look, uh, but I'll go into this race and I kind of, I didn't realize it's slightly, it's quite blind. A, a, lot, of, a lot of the time I can, you know, I'll just, I'll judge, I'll judge a corner and it's breaking point just on sight. But because that last, um, the long hairpin, uh, the long left hander, because it's blind, it's it makes it quite difficult to sight a, you know, a point to break without a breaking la uh, without a breaking marker. Um, so I didn't have that, and I couldn't see one. Uh, I didn't have a really a decent breaking marker. So I was losing. I felt like I was losing time there. Um, but everywhere else, I think I were, I think I had pretty decent pace. I was starting to pick up the pace now. I was starting to push a little bit. Uh, I haven't pitted yet, and I was going to go right to the end. I was hoping to go right to the end to maximise uh, the possibility of winning. Uh, I'd made that decision to go right to the last lap and stay out, which is, can be quite tricky uh, if your tyres go. Um, but usually it works for the best. Obviously, if there's somebody fast coming through uh, and you really want to win, you have to pit um, round about you know, like the fair pit, then you've got to pit. Uh, and this is what happens. Um, just um, just to kind of cover them off and I did need to cover him off he went for the undercut I had to cover him off but you can see he's really getting close now I didn't have a breaking point for here um, I've kind of got a, a rough idea now I've had a look there's a little hut on the left hand side there and that's kind of what I used but I was really struggling again it's another blind entry you can't see the corner as you, you're coming over the slight little crest you can't really see the corner makes it tricky to, to spot your breaking point you can't really see the corner here uh, till the last minute and it's um, yeah if you don't have a braking marker um, there's a little bit of guesswork involved but yeah you can see it's really closed me in now so I'm starting to push and I'll just say you know usually when when I'm out in front I'll just kind of slightly the pace will drop off but here I think I was really beginning to push harder and take that risk work versus reward I was going for it all or nothing either a win or I've crashed, they were getting to that point, so I'm really early on the throttle, 
Uh, the car's you know struggling as late as possible on the brakes. Um, carry as much speed through here and then get jam on the power there. Uh, the car's really kind of uh, right on the edge there. And coming up up into this corner and um, yeah, it's definitely reeled me in. Um, and I'm pushing again on that, just jumping on that power there. And um, coming into this corner, just brave as you like. Carry as much speed as possible. Really difficult. And then through the sweeping corner, getting on the power really early, hoping that you don't understeer out, and then just letting it go right up to the rev limiter there, which I don't normally do. I like to protect the engine, but I'll just do that there. And then I make a little slight mistake here. I get a little bit wide. It's right behind me, so I'm going to have to brake as little as possible. It's a tricky one to spot. A slight lock up, um, but carrying as much speed as possible, really pushing now. Trying to keep the car right as close on the edge as possible. Now, I knew you were vulnerable here because this is a point where I don't have a braking uh, marker. Um, but yeah, there's this little wall on the left hand side. That's the best thing that I can find to, to use. And then this is a really tricky bit. Get on the power. Try not to spin out the back. Um, get through the messes. That's really tricky. Slight little lift. Uh, trying to do it flat, but you need that little lift, or at least I do. He's probably got more handling than me. You can see he's closed right up, and you'll see now this is the point, I think, where he's realised that he's got much more pace than me and he's going to dive into the pits. Now, if I'd have known that he was going to do that, then I would have um, had to do the same uh, to cover him off, which I don't usually like to do that technique, but I would have had to do it. Okay, well, you'll see here. This is the point where it really 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 me in because I will try to break as late as possible coming into here. Um, you know, trail braking, lever braking as late as possible, get on the power as early as possible. And this is the crucial lap. This is the lap that really counts. And we'll just look at his lap because we didn't see we haven't seen this. We've seen my lap, but this is his out lap. Now this is the absolute this is this is the turning point of the race. This is the actual crucial part. Now if he gets a good lap out lap here, and he's gonna just sail past me. If he does like if he does a personal best now, then he's gonna, um, you know, he's gonna sort of take the race. Now you've seen it from my perspective. I just did a nice tidy lap, uh, kept it within the lines, did a nice tidy lap, drove as fast as I could. Um, but yeah, made a slight mistake. Not a big mistake, not a huge error. I'm not sure where he's losing pace, but obviously his his um, his fastest lap was uh, a second and a half faster than mine. So somewhere along this lap, he is lost over two seconds uh, to what he should have done. His lap lap here is absolutely crucial, and my lap was absolutely crucial too. So I'll be uh, shortly going in. I probably won't skip to it. We'll stick with this, but you've, you've seen I'll be shortly going into the pits, and then it's just that crucial lap lap. It's quite tense because you don't know exactly where you'll be coming out. Um, but yeah, we're sticking with this. He's, he seems to be doing a fairly tidy lap. Um, I can't really see how he lost so much time, but it's strange. But you'll see when I come out of the pits, I, I were kind of confused. I was just wondering, you know, where is he? I couldn't actually see him. I came out of the pits. I was expecting him to be, I expected to coming out of the pit lane and seeing him coming flying past into the lead. Um, but yeah, I, I managed to get into the pits, cover him off. And somehow, uh, he's kind of, for some reason, his outlap has not been so great. And I must have just absolutely nailed my lap. Uh, I don't know what the lap times are, because obviously I, I don't use hood anymore. I prefer to, I think it's just more realistic to not use a hood. Um, but yeah, here, here, here we are. So this is the point, and if you look, I've got a massive lead again. Somehow, I don't know how it happened. It, it kind of baffled me. I, I remember I, I came out. And uh, I was looking, I was looking ahead, and I will try to look ahead. Oh, here, I will try to look ahead, and I was like, "Man, how far ahead has he got in that one lap? He is absolutely just destroying me. Like, like I can't believe I can't even see him anymore." And I started looking back, and I was like, "Wait a second, whoa, is he behind me still? Like, quite far behind?" Uh, and obviously, I don't, like I say, I don't use hood, so I didn't know what position I was in. I didn't know what, how many laps there was left. Or anything like that. Um, I prefer to just have a screen blank, and it's, I just find it more realistic. Um, but yeah, I looked back and I started to see him, and I realised I was still in the lead of the race, or at least, you know, that, that I knew of. Um, unless anybody had really done a massive undercut, 
and they had some you know serious pairs like uh, you know that I didn't know about obviously um, but it seemed like I was still ahead of this guy at least but you can see here he's, he's gonna start pulling me in again it makes a slight mistake that it goes a little bit narrow gets on the curb on the outside that's not gonna help I was struggling with this breaking point again so he's probably gonna close in you can see that he's a little bit closer here and I think he's maybe it has a little bit more confidence through these S's um, it just takes takes a lot of curb there takes a lot of curb there that's nicely done I think he were completely flat through there which I was not managing I don't think I managed to do that once in this race and then again closed in this point where I was not too comfortable with a breaking point um, I, but I get the good exit that's one thing about the Jaguar is you know you can get you can get the power down nice and early and I've got the power down nice and early there obviously I've got that upgraded rear tyre width which he probably does not have for, to, to get the race, race brakes I don't really know possibly he does have at all but um, yeah you see here braking on the race brakes it closes right up I broke so hard there um, I braked so hard um, I even went slightly wide and went for that late um, apex pivoted and came back and tried to get the car straight and get on the power early I tried to do all that um, sometimes that can work in your favor sometimes that can be faster to go in deep uh, at that corner you can make that work but I was, I was breaking as late as I could but it closed probably halved the gap it was quite a big gap and it halved it just from um, having that um, you know a breaking ability um, so yeah we'll see how um, we'll see how he fares through this uh, section I think it was slightly faster through here uh, it's a difficult section to get right especially this right hander in this car in the car that I was using as you can see yeah it's pulled it even closer I made a slight mistake, I drifted wide, so I've had to go defensive, and this is a point where it makes contact. I don't think I do anything wrong, I go slightly deep, um, and then I just had to cover it off and make sure that it wasn't going to squeeze through on my right hand side there. And I'm going to go defensive, slightly defensive again. I don't really need to, um, but it's managed to take a wider entry into that corner and get closer to me again. So we'll see how I fare through this uh, for the S's. Um, get on the curb. He gets on the curb a little bit too much, drifts wide, but I didn't do too bad. This is where I'm vulnerable because I don't know my braking point. Managed to brake later, swings it round for an out outside line, but I think I've done just about enough. Uh, push out wide, uh, make him go the long way round if he has to, and uh, yeah, that's how I got the win. And it was uh, it were a hard fought win, and it were a good one. And uh, yeah, so there we go. That is the end of the uh, the video and I hope you enjoyed that video as uh, as much as I did because uh, yeah that were uh, one of my better races and I'm quite proud of that one so yeah thanks for watching and uh, hit like and subscribe if you haven't already cheers